How's it going you guys? So for this video we're going to go over the problem reverse vowels of a string. So this problem is going to involve two pointers and I really like this problem just because learning how to do this two pointer solution will allow you to solve a lot of other string based problems. So the description says write a function that takes a string as input and reverse only the vowels of a string. So in the first example we have the string hello and the only vowels in this string are E and O. And so as you can see, both of them are swapped, right? But also keep in mind that we also have to handle capitalized vowels. It doesn't say it inside of this problem description, but we do have to handle that. So let's jump over to the whiteboard and I'll show you guys how to solve this. We're going to go through the example reversing the vowels in the string apple pie. So our vowels are going to include A, E, I, O, U, but keep in mind that we have to handle capitalized vowels. In the leak code examples that they provide, they didn't go over an example where they had capitalized vowels, but we still still do have to handle that case. So like I said before, we're going to solve this problem using two pointers. So in a typical two pointer fashion, we're going to need to have a left and right pointer where our left pointer will start on the uh, at index zero, right? And then we're going to have a right pointer, and this will start at the rightmost position of our string. So we have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 indices, so right would start at 7. So we have our left right here, and then our right right here. And so what we need to do is we need to check if the characters at our left and right pointer are vowels. If both of them are vowels, that means we need to swap them. And this is so that we're actually doing the reverse process as we're moving inward on our original string. So A and E are both vowels. So that means we need to swap these characters. So A and E would be changed. So E would move to the very front and A would move to the very back. And then once we do that swapping process, we need to move both of our pointers inward because we don't care about those vowels anymore because we already swapped them. So our left pointer will now be looking at P and then our right pointer will be looking at I. And so we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna check if these are vowels. So P is not a vowel. So what that tells us, we need to increase our L pointer because we don't care about non-vowel characters. So L would move forward. But then we still have our R pointer. Our R pointer is a vowel. So what that means is we need to stay put because we still need to reverse this vowel if we find another vowel on the other pointer. So this R pointer is just going to stay put. And we're going to check L again, and L is not at a vowel, so we're going to increase it once more. And then we're going to check R pointer again. R pointer is still at a vowel, so we don't do anything. And then we look back at our left pointer. L is not a vowel, so we move forward. And then now we're at a vowel, finally, for E. And since both L and R contain vowels, we need to swap them. So E and I, right? So I would be put here, and then E would be put here. And then since we swapped them, we need to move both of our pointers inward because we don't need to be looking at these vowels any further because they've already been reversed. So both L and R are going to move to P, but since both L and R are at the same indice, that means we are finished iterating and we're, we successfully reversed all of the vowels in our string. So our final output would be E-P-P-L-I-P-E-A. So that's how you solve this problem using the two-pointer solution. Next, I'm going to jump into the code. So we're given a string S, and we need to return a string, which will be the reverse vowels, right? So the first thing we can do, let's convert S to a character array, and this will just make our lives easier for when we're swapping characters. 
So we can say char array is equal to s dot two char array. And next, we want to create our left and right pointers like we talked about. So we're going to say int left is equal to zero. And then our right pointer is going to start at array dot length minus one. So the very last index. And we're going to say while our left is less than our right, because if our left becomes equal to our right, that means we are done, right? So while that is true, this is where we're going to check whether the characters that we're currently looking at are vowels. So we can actually have an extra helper function for this, right? So we can come down here, we can say, have a function and tell me if it's a vowel or not, right? And so we're gonna pass in just a character and we can say return, and we're going to check if this letter is equal to A-E-I-O-U. But keep in mind, we have to also check if this letter could be an uppercase vowel. So the way we can avoid just checking a bunch of different characters is we can say the character C is equal to character dot two lowercase of the letter. And then now we only have to check A-E-I-O-U just for the lowercase letters. So we can say return C is equal to A or C is equal to E or C is equal to I or C is equal to O and C is equal to U. So that's our helper function for determining if a character is a vowel. So now we just need to check uh, our left and right pointer. So we can say left is a vowel, and we're going to call is vowel, and we need to extract r at index left. And then we're going to say right is vowel, and get the character at the right index. And so now this is where the logic comes in. We need to first check if both left and right are vowels. If both of them are vowels, that means we need to actually swap them. So we'll also need another helper function to swap characters in our array. So we can say swap, and we're going to pass in a character array, and then we need two positions to swap from. So we can assign a temp variable to index uh, at the character i, and we can say r i is equal to r at j, and then r at j is equal to our temp variable. So we're performing a swap. So now let's check if both our left and right vowel, uh, let's check if both left and right pointers are vowels, right? So if left is a vowel and our right is a vowel, then what that means is we need to swap these two characters and then we need to increase our left pointer and decrease our right pointer, right? So we can say swap at left and right and then we're going to increase left and then decrease right. And then Another thing we need to do, if, if this is not true, we, we need to check if the left and right pointer are not vowels. Because remember, if they're not vowels, that means we need to move those pointers because we don't care about characters that are not vowels. So if our left is not a vowel, then we're just going to increase, increase left, right? And then if our right is not a vowel, then we're going to decrease right. And then finally, we just need to convert this array that we assigned on line three to a new string to be returned. So return new string of array. So let's just make sure that this solution works. So let's submit it. 
And there we go. So next, I'm going to go into the time and space complexity of our two-pointer solution. The time complexity of our solution is going to be big O of n, where n is the number of characters that we have in our input string. We have to loop over every character a single time in our original string. And then our space complexity is also going to be big O of n, where n is the number of characters that we have in our string. On line 9, we have to allocate new memory. And we do this so that we can do in-place swaps using this swap function that we wrote, right? So big O of n for both the time and space. So that's it for this problem. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I'll see you guys in the next one.